Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's bi-weekly contest, maximize win from two segments. The problem states that you are given an integer array price positions, which is sorted. And you have to select two segments of length k and with, within these two segments, you will be getting all the prices. For example, let's say you select uh, 1, 3 and 2, 4. So you will be getting all the prices which lies between 1 and 3 or 2 and 4, right? And so these are, these are the number of prices that you will get after choosing a particular range 1, 3 and 2, 4. So you have to select these two range optimally such that you will be getting maximum number of prices, right? So let's take an example. Let's say this is the price array and k is 2. So what does this mean? It means that you have to select two ranges each of which should be of length 2 because k is 2, right? So let's say we select two ranges 1, 3 and 3, 5. So notice that the length of 1, 3 is 2 and 3, 5 length is also 2, right? Now with 1, 3 what all prices you will get? You will get all these prices, right? Similarly with 3, 5 what all prices you will get? you will get all these prices because these all lies between 3 and 5. Now, how many like how many prices are you able to capture? You are able to capture all these from range 1 and you are able to capture all these from range 2. So in a way, you, you have captured all the prices. So with by selecting 1, 3 and 3, 5, we are able to capture 7 prices. And hence, like 7, 7, 7 is the answer here because you can't capture more than seven prices because there are only seven prices, right? So you have we have to select these two ranges optimally such that the number of prices that we will be capturing is maximized. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now how to solve this? So let's say k is one, right? And we have to capture two prices, right? So let's start with the first price uh, or first range. We have to select two ranges. K is one, so it means the length of both the ranges should be one, and we have to select two ranges such that the price is maximized. So let's start with the first range, right? Now, what are the possible choices of first range? So first range can start from here, right? Or first range can start from here, or it can start from here, or any index after this, right? So let's say first range starts from index i, right? Now, once we know the starting point of first range, we can, can't we find out the ending point of the range as well? So k is 1, right? Because k is 1, we know maximum, like if this is the starting point, maximum value that you can capture is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So in a way, if you know the starting starting point of any range, you can easily find out the ending point as well, right? So in this case, ending point would be the last index which contains 2. So ending point is this. So in a way, first range would, would start here and end here, right? Now what about second range? So second range can also start at any of these indexes, right? But we have to maximize the number of prices that we have to take or that we, that we can capture. So if we start second range as well from any of these indexes, does it make sense? Let's say we start, uh, we start the, sorry, uh, let's say we start the second range from here. So does it make sense to start second range from here? Answer is no, because this price is already captured, right? So if you are starting your second range from here, in a way, you are losing on some prices that you may have captured, right? So this price is already captured. So we will never start the second range from any of these prices because they are already captured. So we can start the second range from any of these indexes, right? So this can be the first index, this can be second index and so on and so forth, right? So now what is the problem statement? The problem statement is we know the first range, we know the, we know how many prizes are captured as a part of first range. Now we can simply ignore this array uh, at all because this we know that we will not start second range from here and instead we will say okay get me the best range in this part of the array right so that's the new problem given a index given a 
part of the array tell me what is the maximum range possible or what is the maximum price the number maximum number of price that i can capture by selecting one range right so let's say you have this answer you you have you have this function best range after index that this function uh, will give you what is the uh, sorry uh, what is the first range what is the first what is the best range after a particular index ind right now if you have this function where this function comes from is a separate question we will look at it but let's say you have this function so if you have this function can't you solve this entire problem easily so what what we have suggested is first and we can just say okay uh, we we start first index from i and we can easily find out j which will be the ending point of the first index right this we can do using binary search because array is sorted and we know we just need to find out the last position of a particular value now once you finalize the first range you can just call this function with the value j plus 1 right just because basically you will say give me the best range possible after index j plus 1 and that will be your best range if you if your first range starts at this particular i so you will just iterate over all the i and take this like take the maximum right that will give you answer so uh, sample would look something like this so we'll say okay we'll start from we will start our i from uh, from every every range from 0 to n right and we can easily find the end index for this start index by just doing a uh, binary search because we know the final maximum value that we can capture right so we can just simply do a binary search and get the ending index now with the ending index we know how many prices we are able to capture in the first range and once we know the end index we can simply query uh, this function and get the what is the best range possible in the remaining part of the array so we'll just call this function for the remaining part of the array which is end index plus 1 right so hope this makes sense now only thing we need to take care is can we can we do or can we solve this problem efficiently that given an index i tell me what is the best range after me that's the problem now i would encourage you to pause the video right away and try to think yourself of how how you will be solving this a uh, particular problem given a index i tell me what is the best range possible so hope you thought about it now this is what we need to solve for what is the best range after a uh, index i now what this problem is so let's say you this is i you need to find out what is the best range possible after i so two things can happen right either second range would start at i right or second range would not start at i instead it will start at some something after i right so if uh, let's say it starts at i so if it starts at i you can easily find out the end index right because you know the value of k so you can easily find out the ending index uh, if the starting index is this i now if it is not i what does it mean if it is if the starting index is not i it means starting index would be one of these right so in a way what you are saying is give me the maximum range in this part of the array so what we are trying to solve we are trying to solve give me the maximum range in this part of the array and we have two choices either i can be the starting point or i will not be the starting point and uh, if i is not starting point what we have to solve we have to solve give me the maximum range in the rest of the array this problem is exactly similar to what the problem we are trying to solve right so you hope you can see the recursion here so let's write, try to write write the recursion down we are trying to find f of i right like uh, f, f, f of i means the best range after i so there are two choices either it will start at i or it will not start at i right so if it is not if it will not start at i what will be the value value would be f of i plus 1 right and uh, what does this mean this means that give me the maximum value if in the array which starts at i plus 
if it starts at i you can simply find out the length of this uh, range so you can just take the maximum of these two and this will give you the value of f of i right so you will try both possible case either you'll start at i or you'll not start at i so you will get the value of all both the cases and take the maximum and that that will give you the value of f of i right so hope this makes sense now how will the pseudocode look like pseudocode would look something like this we will just see if uh, the base case like if index is n it means uh, we we can't get any price at all so we'll return zero right if index is not n we will we have two choices either we will skip i or we will not skip i if we will skip i the value would be best range after starting from index plus 1 right but if you if you if you do not skip i then we know the maximum possible value right the same way that we have calculated before we we know the maximum possible value and we can just simply do a binary search for the maximum index which have this value and once we get the index we can simply find out the length of the length of the or the number of prices that you will be able to capture using this uh, segment so this is what you will be getting with i and this is what you are getting without it so just take the maximum of both two and you will be getting their final answer right so hope this makes sense now what is the time complexity of this function so we are calling this function for a particular index i now how many times or how many unique ways can we call this function n unique ways we can call this function right because the value of index could be anything between 0 to n so there are n unique ways to call this function and for each of these ways what we are doing we are either calling for the next one this is a constant operation or we are doing a binary search so this binary search would require log n time so for each of this uh, n times we are doing a binary search inside this so n log n this is the time complexity of this function so this is the time complexity assuming that we only calculate one index exactly once like we will do memoization and we will only calculate the value of single index once and hence the complexity would be n log n so now we know that we can calculate best range after in n log n now if you remember we we started with this uh, this solution where we say that okay we will call this best range after inside a loop now if you look at it in the naive fashion you will say okay there this can take n time like this with this loop will iterate over n time and inside each of this i am uh, doing a binary search so this is log n right and after binary search i am also calling this best range after function which uh, will take order n log n so you you can say that okay the complexity is order n square log n but this n log n is not over a single value this n log n will be will give you the value for all such indexes right so what like for a single index let's say you calculate uh, you calculate the value for all indexes beforehand you just call this function for 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to n and you know the value for all these functions and this entire thing would take order n log n now you know the value for all the all the all the indexes right so calculating for a single index would be now order one right because you know the value of all the indexes you have already calculated that so this thing would then become order one right so basically the complexity is order n log n for this part and order n log n for calculating the best range after part right so overall the complexity is order n log n itself so hope this makes sense now i would strongly encourage you to code this solution yourself uh, and you will see that okay uh, how exactly this complexity would fit in there right now i like i can show you the code right right now but i will i will show a different version of this same code like we we are if you see these two functions clearly uh, let's let's just bring this function here right so if you if you notice this two function we are doing something similar like we are do, just doing a binary search right and we are taking a maximum and here also we are doing a binary search and taking a maximum right so these two function can be combined in a single function as well so that's what i have quoted during the live contest and that's what we will be going to look at 
but i would encourage you to code this particular piece yourself if you are if you are still not very very clear about the solution right now let's look at the code so as discussed like uh, in this code we are coming from backward instead of uh, fixing the first range i am fixing the second range first so what we are saying is okay uh, fix the second range and give me the best range best first range so we fix the first we fix the second range and second range value we find the started starting index of the second range now once we fix the once we know the starting index of the second range ending index of the first range would start from anywhere between uh, anywhere before start right so that's what we have taken here so this is exactly similar to this solution if you are not sure why i would encourage you to uh, think about it yourself and if you still have doubts we can discuss in the comment section below so hope you like the solution if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you are not already and i will see you in the next one thank you